Let us now try to understand why arrays are required. Let's say we have to accept the age of one person. We will declare a variable called int age and we will accept the input value. Suppose we want to print the age, we will print it like this. So print of age. What if we want to accept three persons? So then we will say age one, age two, age three. And in scanf also, we will give three format specifiers, percentage %d and we will say age one, age two and age three. Similarly, when you want to print, you will give a space percentage %d and percentage %d. So now you will be printing age 1, age 2, age 3. Let us execute the program. So we are giving 10, 12 and 54. So it will print like this. Suppose they are asking us to accept 5 values, that is 5 ages. Then we will say age 4, age 5. Similarly, you will increase the number of format specifiers because now you have to accept five values. So you are going to say address of age four, address of age five. Similarly, when you are printing age four, age five. So now itself, it is looking like an imposition. Because you are typing the format specifier 5 times, you are giving the arguments 5 times and so on. What if we want to accept the ages of 1000 persons? Then it will really be difficult. We need to declare variables till age 1000. Okay. And imagine here you have to give 1000 format specifiers percentage d's and you have to give till age 1000, address of age 1000. So similarly, you have to do in, in the printf also. Programmer cannot type that much. So that is where arrays come into picture. So instead of giving 1000 format specifiers, we can use a loop because loop is used to perform repetitive actions. And we will say age of 1000, which means this array size is 1000. So it can contain 1000 integer values because we have told int age 1000. So now this can of, we can bring it inside a loop. So in an array, the index starts from 0. So that is the storing position starts from 0. So the first value will be at index 0. So index equal to 0. Index less than 1000. Index plus plus. Because the starting index is 0, the last index for the 1000th element will be 999. So we say less than 1000, which means the index will go up to triple nine. Okay. So we are saying scan of percentage D and we are going to accept the value at index. So we have to give the address of operator. Don't forget that. So now we have given scan of percentage D. Which element are you going to accept? Array of index, that particular element. Because index is from 0 to 999, 1000 values will be accepted as input and it will be stored here. Similarly, if you want to print the values, you can use the same loop to iterate. Only thing is here you will be using printf and then you won't be giving the address of operator. But always the age may not be 1000. So it will be like n integers. So n can be 2, n can be 3, n can be 5, n can be 100 or n can be 1000. 
or n can be 5000 also. So what we must do is we have to accept the input value n. So we will use scanf to accept the input value of n. So address of n. I have seen many students doing like this. That is if the maximum value of n can be 1000, they declare age 1000 like this. And then they just say less than n and less than n. So this is wrong. Why? Suppose n is 5. The memory allocated must be only for 5 integers. But here it is allocated for 1000 integers. Which means 995 integers are wasted. So you must not declare the array beforehand. Only after accepting the value of n, you must declare the array. Like array of n. Here you should not say array of 1000 because here 1000 may be the maximum value of n but you must be specifying like this. So now let us execute the program. We are going to give 6 input values 1, 2, 88, 44, 54 and 100. So it will print the values. Of course we have not given space so we will give a space when printing. So now let us give 6 input values 23, 558, 87, 90, 145 and 546. So it will print the values accordingly. So this is the reason we are using arrays. That is we are collating the data and we will use a loop to iterate over the values in the array and do some useful things. So here this program may not be useful because it just obtains n values and prints the n value. But you can act on the data that is the group of values and do something useful. If we don't have arrays then as we saw initially we may have to declare a very huge number of variables and when we do not know what is the count of the values coming then we will be at a loss. So, arrays help us to deal with the dynamism. That is, when n is there, whatever the values of n, our program will adapt to that and act accordingly. So, hope you have understood the need for arrays and thanks for watching.